Okay, you guys have been asking for the video on how to fix the drivetrain in the 8 scale infraction Mega. And this is a quick, kind of a quick how to of how to tear it apart, how to diagnose it, how to get into it, and what I did to fix my infraction Mega. First thing is, is if you're having problems with it out of the box and you don't feel comfortable spending more money on parts or doing this type of work yourself return it to the hobby shop send it back to horizon whatever you need to do and uh, warranty it get something else or get a new one this was one of the first shipment i will assume that they will fix this down the road but in this version like i said it was the first one out first shipments and uh the drivetrain was really bound up so let's get into what we need to do to test it. Now mine is already fixed, but I'm gonna show you what you can do to yours. To uh, You need to remove the drive shaft um, to test the front. So remove the drive shaft, you pull it back. That way, you just pull it out like this. Now your drivetrain is free in the front completely from the motor. You can see how uh, freely it spins. So, if your drivetrain or your front end does not spin freely like this, or when you go to spin it, it does, it diffs the other side the other direction, you probably have a binding problem. And the best way to check that is, is to grab, take both front wheels and rotate them forward, and you'll be able to hear, feel it catch. Now, mine was so bad in the front end that as you would rotate it, it would literally stop and you would have to put force on both wheels to get it to spin. And during running, the motor and ESE would heat up within five to seven minutes, very quickly, too quick for a car that's brand new out of the box. So after only two half a battery packs, I dug into this and fixed it. And so this is what I, this is going to be about what I did to fix it. So if your drivetrain already spins free, then you don't need to do anything. You don't have a problem. If you're having problems where if you go to go, you go to spin it and it just stops and catches and you have to force it to rotate, then you might want to look into doing this repair. Or like I said, send it back in for warranty. The rear end had the same problem, not quite as bad as the, as the front. In order to check the rear, you need to remove the power module, just pull it forward, and also rotate it just like that. I did both front and rear the same, and got the drivetrain really freed up, and this thing hauls now, compared to the way it was before. We're going to tear the front end apart, and I'm going to show you what we did. Uh, first thing we need to do, need to remove the upper shock tower screws for the shocks get them out of the you need to remove the upper bumper brace you need to remove these four screws here Okay, once you have those four screws removed, this lifts right up. You can get into the diff. Well, there's your bumper off. You can see there's the ring gear. And you can simply just pull out the differential module. You just pull the telescoping, pull them out like that. Okay, so is what we're looking at here is this is the ring and then down in there is the pinion gear and as you can see there it's nice and smooth like I said this is one that's already done um, when you pull it out when I pulled it out and was trying to spin it like this I mean it would literally gouge into my hands because it was so bound up would not spin free i mean it was it was awful so that's what you need to do next 
Um, once you figure out that yes, it's binding and we've got some problems here, you need to remove the drive shafts. You need a long two millimeter that slides all the way in like that. Okay, with both the drive shafts off, you need to undo this screw and this screw here. Then you just separate these two pieces like this. Your pinion gear is going to fall out. Now there is a shim in this already. And the shim is underneath this bearing on this side. So it's already shimmed in the correct direction. Comes with one single shim. Okay, we're going to be removing the bearing from the, from the ring gear side. So this one here. You want to be careful, take a flathead screwdriver, just get under the lip of that bearing and wiggle it out. Try not to stab yourself in the hand or the fingers because you do slip off and they're on there fairly tight. Okay, now that we have that off of there, I'm going to show you a picture of before and then this is the after here's where the bearing sits and it butts up to this little lip it's very small so i just take a file and i'm going to file that little lip off right there so that the bearing will go in closer so on the before <clears throat> you can see in the before picture Right here, along this edge, you'll see there's a lip. I just use this little mini file that has a nice, um, you can see a nice square edge. It's not rounded so that when you're filing, it's getting right in, right into that corner there. So you're getting nice and square. It's not rounded. So if I didn't find a file like this, and you can see this is the after effects of what I've done. So I have completely filed off the lip. So it gives about a half a millimeter or so more clearance. So the bearing sits lower and then therefore is pushing the gear, the ring gear away from the pinion, that extra little bit. Now in the rear, just filing off this side was enough to free it up significantly and it would have been and it was good enough in the front it was so bound up that i had to actually get in there and do the same thing to the pinion gear behind this this bearing here file the little lip off the pinion gear too which is right here so after you file this one down get it flushed where you know, there's no lip and it's sitting all the way flush. So the bearing sits pretty flush and it's still because of the shape of the gear, it's not gonna rub on the ring. So that's not an issue. You can see how it's kind of concaved. So it doesn't rub, um, but you wanna get that, that thing filed flat all the way around. Make sure it's nice and flat. You don't have any high spots. This is your first step. After you file this down, put it all back together and try it. Spin the ring gear and stuff just inside this case. If it's much freer and significantly less, then just go ahead and go with that. You don't need to do the pinion side. If it's still really sticking like mine was in the front end, then my suggestion would be is to slide this bearing off here, this outer bearing, and then you just need to wiggle this one, this bearing up enough that you can get to the lip there'll be the same little riser lip inside there as there was on this and then you'll file that down so only do this at this side if needed do not try to pull this inner bearing off all the way uh, when i did this originally i broke the bearing luckily i had a replacement in my toolbox but i also ordered replacements so if you try to pry it off, it's it's not gonna it gets stuck in here. It doesn't come off all the way, so be careful with that. But you can get it back 
further than this, but you can get it back far enough. You can get your file in there and get it filed down. After you do that, this should be super smooth and you should have no issues. Uh, and then you easily just uh, put everything back together. None of my gears are wearing down or wearing uneven. They still look nice for plastic gears. So by filing them down, getting more clearance, it hasn't caused any more wear by having it further apart. So one reason why I didn't post this video sooner is because I wanted to inspect them, make sure everything looks good. Okay, we're just putting this back together. We can see everything spins nice and free for plastic gears anyway. We got to put it back together. And there is a metal a metal option available. Um, from Arma, but you have to buy the ring gear, the pinion gear, and do a new diff case. And it's kind of expensive. So this is actually a cheaper option than doing that. And there's the reason why I decided to go ahead and hack into this and uh, see if I could solve the problem before I spent hundred and who knows, it was a lot of money. I mean, I think it was almost, I don't know. It was a lot of money, way more than I wanted to spend on a $300 car right out of the gate to fix. That shouldn't have needed fixed in the first place. Don't forget to use just a little bit of Loctite. Don't overdo it. I did that one already too. Use a little Loctite to hold the screw in. Make sure you get the orientation correct. You gotta slide in the drive shafts at the same time. Just like so, screws in on the bottom. Don't forget to grease your ring and pinion. Add some more heavy duty grease to it. Okay, there we go. Everything's back together. Um, this little um, fix it mod should free up your drivetrain if you were having problems. Should free it up, give you more speed, more battery life, a little less heat on the electronics. Please like, subscribe, and share. Thank you.